Well, let's break it down to the good news and the bad news. The good news is that <laughs> robots increase productivity. They increase profits. They increase efficiency. They're very fast. And so companies could be making a, a killing on, on robots. But there's a downside. You see, uh, these chatbots are like tape recorders. They don't know right from wrong. They don't know truth from untruth. And as a consequence, they can spit out nonsense. And they can also impersonate things. <laughs> now imagine what happens if a chatbot impersonates Vladimir Putin and declares war on NATO. Uh -huh. Then you're talking about havoc coming out if a teenage boy Ooh. tries to monkey around with a chatbot. So I think chatbots have to be regulated. Now, we don't want the politicians to get, in, get into this because they're going to mess everything up. We want self-regulation. Right. We want fact-checking. We want a new class of robots called quantum robots, quantum computers that can act as a fact-checker for digital computers so that we know the difference between true and false, right and wrong, and still make profits, still increase productivity. Well, first of all, AI is a software program. We're talking about uh, homogenizing different kinds of essays on the web, splicing them together, and then passing it off as your latest creation. Basically, plagiarism using digital computers. It's a software question. However, quantum computers is bigger than that. Quantum computers is a hardware question where it actually increases your ability to do much more than with an ordinary digital computer. So the two of them, the uh, chatbots that are a revolution in software and then quantum computers, which are a revolution in hardware, when they get together, watch out. So we're talking about an extremely powerful alliance between software and hardware. Now also, as you know, chatbots will also lie, cheat, swindle, joke, and do all sorts of crazy things. Yes. If you're a high school kid, you could write all sorts of science fiction scenarios, and some chatbot may grab pieces of that nonsense and incorporate it into their essay. Chatbots do not know what is correct or incorrect. All they do is homogenize, cut up existing things that sound human, put it together, and then people say, my God, that sounds like a human wrote it. Of course, a human did write it. Even though there's a good aspect to all these software programs, the downside is that you can fabricate truth because it cannot tell the difference uh. between false and what is false and what is true. That's very interesting. If you talk to the chat, uh, the chat bot and say, do you know the difference between correct and incorrect? And they say, no, it's just on the web. Mm -hmm. They're just instructed to cobble together existing paragraphs, splice them together and polish it up and then spit it out. But is it correct? It doesn't care. It doesn't know. But you see, that's what a chatbot is. A chatbot is like a teenager that plagiarizes other people's essays, passes it off as their own. Now, I'm a scientist. We like to think about things that are creative, new, innovative, things that will change our perception of the world. None of that, absolutely none of that, comes from a chatbot. A chatbot simply rearranges pre-existing essays. That's yeah. all it does. Think of the blacksmith. The blacksmith used to be the bedrock of every community, right? But what happened to the, uh, the blacksmith? The horse was replaced by the mechanical horse, the automobile, and the blacksmith became an automobile worker. So the key is not to fight progress, not to fight change, not to fight science. That's inevitable. You gotta roll with the punches. You gotta be able to adapt to it, educate people. And in fact, in the educational system, we have a regressive movement to dumb down the curriculum. That's the wrong strategy, because we have to uplift workers so they can adapt to robotics. They can adapt to this new technology and be part of it. And remember, workers that understand artificial intelligence and how to use it, they will thrive. Workers who do not will be out of a job. Well, there are three kinds of jobs that robots have a hard time replacing. The first is blue collar jobs that are non-repetitive. Robots cannot hammer a nail. They cannot pick up garbage. They cannot fix a toilet. Robots are very, very bad at non-repetitive blue collar work. Second, 
emotional jobs, jobs involving rapport with a human being, being a professor, being a teacher, uh, being a counselor, being a, uh, a therapist, all that cannot be replaced by a robot. Third category is imagination. Mm -hmm. People that are innovative, that are leaders of society, that strategize, that dream about the future, those jobs cannot be replaced. You know, when I write a book, um, my publisher has a fact checker, a fact checker that goes through all the different statements that I make to make sure that they're all correct. There is no fact checker for chatbots. Let me repeat that again. Mm. There is no fact checker for chatbots. That is the whole ball of wax. That's the reason why they're so dangerous. Because mm. they can they don't know. These chatbots are machines. They don't know what is correct, what is incorrect. It's all the same to them. Mm. That's the danger. That they could incorporate teenagers ranting and raving about all sorts of garbage and put that in with articles that sound reasonable. Quantum computers can act as a fact checker. You can ask a quantum computer to remove all the garbage, remove all the nonsense in these articles, and it'll do that. So, in other words, the hardware may be a check on some of the wild statements made by software. Yes. Right now, the chatbot just splices it together like an editor. That's all it is, an editor, not a fact checker, and spits out cobbled together articles that sound reasonable, but there could be dynamite inside some of these articles that were spliced into what was proposed. With a quantum computer, you can fact check things. Mm. And then you can say, this is 90% correct. This is totally wrong. This is sometimes correct. And you, you get gradations of what is correct and incorrect. Well, we have to make sure that our quantum computers can check other people's quantum computers right. to make sure that they're not fudging the facts. If this is not done legally, if there are no laws passed in this direction, and it's the, like the Wild West, then, of course, the politicians get involved yeah. and it becomes a real mess. Now, yeah. we do know that you cannot yell fire in a crowded theater. Therefore, there are limits to free speech. We get that. But how do you make limits on statements that are written on the web that no human can co possibly follow? Right. That's where quantum computers can come in. Quantum computers can are powerful enough to survey the entire landscape and give reasonable rebuttals to things that are just outrageous. The benefits are here to stay. Let's face it, they're not going to go away. But we can have self-regulation. We can pass laws that are wise and be able to harness the power of this. And with the next generation of computers, quantum computers, we should be able to do this seamlessly so we're not, we don't have to shut down uh, what we have today with robots. So robots are not gonna go away. They're here to stay, but self-regulation and fact-checking <laughs> is required. And just remember that, where do correct ideas come from? Correct ideas come from interaction with incorrect ideas. It's the, yes. it's the struggle between ideas out of which correct ideas emerge. And this does not happen on the internet because of course with chatbots, everything is cobbled together, mm -hmm. cut, spliced, and simply glued together with scotch tape, masquerading as an essay. So with fact checking, I think it's going to be different because unless we do fact checking, the politicians will get involved yes. and this is going to be a real mess. So I would hope that the industry does fact checking by itself rather than having politicians do it.